Hey there, Touch Designer developers, Jack Delora here with the Interactive and Immersive HQ. In this video, we're going to continue with the feedback theme that Elbers touched on last week, and this time utilize feedback to generate reaction diffusion patterns, which you can see on screen. So this is actually a pretty simple effect to generate using feedback, um, but there are a lot of different operators that you can use to modify the uh, kind of outcome of the effect. So we're gonna dive into kind of building the basic effect and then also modifying it with some additional operators and additional inputs to the feedback loop. Should be another uh, fun feedback based effect for all of you who just can't get enough of feedback. So with that, let's jump into building this. So real quick, before we get started, I just wanted to point out that the reason that we are um, talking about reaction diffusion or calling this reaction diffusion is because the appearance of this effect that we're creating today looks something like reaction diffusion systems, uh, which are essentially mathematical models that replicate um, chemical reaction and diffusion. I would definitely um, take a look on your favorite search engine or Wikipedia uh, for reaction diffusion so that you can get a more, you know, scientific definition of what's going on there. Um, obviously, we're not working with those real, real world formulas to generate this stuff. We're just creating something that looks very similar to it. If you're interested in that topic as well, definitely take a look at Turing patterns um, because they kind of encompass a similar sort of aesthetic and area to what we're working on today. Um, with that aside, let's jump into building the network. Okay, so for our effect today, we're actually going to create two different textures to input into the feedback loop. Um, the first one's going to be very familiar if you uh, watched the previous video on this channel. We're gonna use a circle and a constant top and move the circle around on screen randomly. And then our second texture is just gonna be a noise top. So for this first one, grab a circle top and then also grab a constant top and place that below. In the constant top, I'm gonna to turn the alpha to zero. Oops. And then I'm gonna set on the common page the resolution to 1024 by 1024. Then I'm going to attach an over top and connect the circle to the first input and the constant to the second. Within the over top, I'm gonna to set the prefit overlay to native resolution. And then on the common page, I'm actually also going to set our pixel format here to 16-bit float. Cool, so that is all set. Um, we do, however, want to actually have the circle kind of animating around on the screen. So I'm gonna follow the same kind of approach as Elbers did and grab a noise chop for that. And I'll put it right above the over. Um, first, we'll come to the common page and turn time slicing on. Then I'm going to come to the channel page and set up two channels, um, one called X and the other called Y. So I'm just typing in X space Y there and hitting enter. And now we got two channels of noise. And then finally, I'm gonna set the period to something a little bit higher so it slows the uh, output down a little bit. I'm gonna set that to two. Then I'm gonna make a chop reference from those two channels to the transform page of the over, specifically the translate parameter here. So let's just grab the X and Y channels for that. And what we should see then is that our circle is moving around on screen. Um, we can go ahead and hook up a null to that um, if we want to, that looks good. And then I'm also going to set up the noise top as well. So for the noise top, um, let's just go ahead and make a couple of changes here. Um, I'm first gonna start off by setting the period to 11. So we kind of crop in on that noise texture. Then I'm gonna set the amplitude and offset to 0 0.2. And on the transform page, I'm gonna add a um, typical ABS time reference to the translate Z parameter so that our noise will change over time. So I'm gonna type in ABS time dot seconds and then multiply that by 0 0.1. Cool, so we've got our two textures ready to go. And I guess the best way to approach this is I'm gonna hook this null up to our feedback effect and just connect the particular um, texture that we want to use to the network. 
Um, so now that we have that null attached, let's add feedback. So you'll find out very quickly that this is actually a super simple effect to put together. So we'll kind of, we'll put the effect together first. It's just a handful of operators. And then we'll look at some different ways that we can modify the effect to get a, uh, a wider variety of outcomes. So first of all, we need the feedback top. And so I'm gonna add that to the network. And one thing that I'm going to do here just for ease of use is add a keyboard in chop so that I can reset the feedback via the one key on the keyboard. I'm just gonna make a chop reference from that K1 chop channel to the pulse parameter in the reset uh, parameter there. And with that, we can continue on with our feedback loop by adding a null. I'm gonna put that over to the right and then I'm going to, um, just as you've seen probably in other videos and Albers's video as well, end our feedback loop with a composite top. So in the composite top really quick before we connect our second input, I'm just gonna set the operation here to add and then I'll connect null one to that composite. So we're not generating any feedback yet because we haven't set a target top within the feedback top. So to do that, I'm just gonna click and drag the composite one top onto the feedback top. And what we should see then is that our screen starts filling with um, white because our feedback, you know, we're not really doing anything to that signal. So it's just building up over top of itself over and over. Um, and now we can actually dive in to um, modifying that feedback signal to generate that texture. One thing I am gonna do though, before we kind of dive into generating the reaction diffusion style effect is composite in a background so that we can look at our final outcome without seeing the, um, the sort of checkerboard uh, transparency mat in the background. So to do that, I've just added a constant I'm gonna set the color here to black. I'm gonna to come to the output page and turn on comp with input. And I'm gonna set the operation here to under. And then just for good measure, I'll attach a null to the end. And what we should see if we view that in the background is these transparent areas are now black. So how do we go from this super basic feedback effect where we just sort of fill up the screen with white to reaction diffusion style effects. Well, as I was saying, it's actually incredibly simple. Um, we only need two uh, operators to start generating that kind of effect. The first one is the blur top. So what I'm going to do is right after the feedback effect, I'm going to insert a blur top. And even after resetting, we should see, you know, nothing has really changed here. We're still getting a texture that eventually will fill the whole screen with white. So the next step here is to open up the palette and head to image filters and grab the sharpen effect. Now you could use the um, convolve top to get a sharpening kind of effect as well, but since the sharpen um, effect is already, you know, accessible and easy to use within the palette, we're just gonna use that in this case. So let's connect the sharpen uh, effect to the network. I'm gonna connect the blur one to sharpen and then I'm gonna connect the output of sharpen to null two. If we then take a look at this in the background and reset, we still don't see anything. But if we make one parameter change, which is this sharpen amount parameter and set that to a value of one, we should start to see some of those patterns filling the screen. Now, they're a little bit uh, smaller and a little bit more rough than we saw in the initial version at the beginning. Um, and that is intentional to show you how some of these parameters can affect the way this looks. So by, by default, with the kind of default settings of everything that's going on here, we are getting those patterns. But if we come back to the blur top and start to play around with the parameters here, we can actually change how this outcome looks. So first of all, if I set my pre-shrink to something higher like two, you can see that that changes the scale of that texture. And you can keep increasing that and shrinking it more. And as you'll see, you can you know change the scale and make it even larger. 
Um, we're going to leave it at a value of two, but again, feel free to play around with any of these values to come up with different results. You'll notice now that we've set this up that anytime you hit the one key, um, it should reset and you will then see the pattern sort of fill the screen once again. So you'll notice that uh, because of the way, or because we haven't really done much with our feedback network, um, besides adding these two operators, we don't really see the um, circle moving around at all and our texture just sort of fills the screen. We see it for a moment and then the pattern takes over and that's it. Um, we're going to look at now adding to our feedback network to start modifying that effect. Um, one other thing I want to mention, besides the pre-shrink, you can also play around with the filter size, which will have you know similar results of changing the overall scale of that pattern. Um, now that I've said that, let's jump back to adding more to this network. So what we can do to begin is kind of follow similar steps to what Elbers did in his video about feedback by adding a level top. So with the level top, we are now um, clamping our input range between zero and one, and we can also do a couple of other things to modify the output here. So we're going to head to the post page and turn down the opacity, which if you remember in the previous video had the effect of fading out the trails over time. In this case, it's not going to do quite the same thing. I'm going to turn that down to 0 0.7. What we can see here is that it essentially, if we can flip this on and off, kind of reduces the sharpness of the lines a little bit and, um, and makes the contrast a little bit lower. But now that we've added this level top, we can see that our circle has reappeared and is actually modifying this texture in the background as it moves around, which is really interesting and cool. Um, so like the blur top, we can actually play around with just about any of the parameters within the level top to have similar sorts of sometimes subtle adjustments to our outcome. If we head back to the pre page, we can do something like modify the gamma. You could increase that. Um, you can see that fills in a little bit of the space more. Um, we can reduce that to something like 0 0.75. And you can see that we then can even reduce that more and get more space in between the different um, reaction diffusion style components. We can bump the contrast up or down, which will change the look even more. Um, but this is all just to show you that a lot of these parameters can have subtle but interesting effects on the outcome. Now that we've added the level, um, I think another interesting place to take a look at is the transform top. Now Elbers covered this in the previous video and this allows you to kind of move the feedback around in space. Um, we can pull it in any one direction and also scale it. We'll take a look at those different options for our effect. So what I'm gonna do first is uh, begin by increasing the scale just slightly. And you can see that when we increase it above one, we have that similar sort of effect of like pulling the feedback towards us. But in this case, it sort of pulls that reaction diffusion texture outwards and um, causes it to almost like regenerate new patterns in areas where there weren't patterns before. Um, we can do the same thing in the opposite direction where we shrink the texture and you can see on the edges of the screen here, we get this new sort of pattern generation, which is super cool and interesting. Um, we can set the scale back to one and just test out translating. Again, these are gonna have different results because we're not just generating trailing in this case, we're sort of filling the screen with this pattern. So you can see here, we're getting um, a different sort of look where we have all these horizontal lines and we can combine that with vertical um, translation as well and get, you know, again, different results. Um, let's reset that back to zero. You can also do things like rotate, which you'll have to increase to something probably like, whoa, maybe not 20, but uh, something smaller than that, like 10, maybe even five. 
Um, you could even go lower than that, honestly, something like three or two. Um, that gives you a somewhat interesting, maybe a little bit dizzying sort of effect, but you can combine that with scaling in either direction and produce, again, different variants of these patterns. I'm gonna reset that so that we don't make anybody sick from having to watch this over and over again. Um, I'm gonna leave this with a scale value of 1.001. .001. And then let's also take a look at adding a different texture into the input of our feedback effect. So now that you've had a chance to kind of play around with this circle texture in our reaction diffusion effect, let's connect the noise texture to the input. You'll notice immediately that our uh, output looks a little bit low res and that's because we actually forgot to change the resolution of our noise top at the beginning. Let's head to the common page here and make a couple of changes. So I'm gonna bump the resolution up to 1024 by 1024 and then I'm also gonna do the same thing where I set the pixel format to 16-bit float. Now that we've done that, you can see that we're getting a different result from what we saw previously. Um, we don't have our circle moving around on screen anymore, but uh, also the reaction diffusion-esque pattern itself is different. It's changing based on the noise texture and um, the pattern of lines, again, looks a little bit different. So that itself just shows you that by plugging in a different texture, even one that is you know kind of as abstract as noise can impact the results of this effect. Um, so let's take a look at a couple of other things that you can do to modify the outcome. Now that we've got the noise texture added in, let's head back to the level top for a second and take a look at what we can do there. Um, so you can decrease the gamma in this case, as we did for the circle, and add more of these uh, sort of black spaces in our effect and continue decreasing that and you'll see that more of those will appear on screen. So that's one thing you can do to kind of play around with the value there. Um, again, contrast will modify how the final effect looks. Um, I'm going to leave the gamma at 0 0.5 and contrast at 1. We already are transforming, uh, and we kind of have a, an idea now of what that looks like in both directions. Um, the way that the patterning will fill the screen looks a little bit different with the noise, just because of the texture, but um, it's fairly similar to what we saw with the circle. Now, one other effect that we haven't looked at yet, adding to the network, again comes from that same sort of basic tool set that Elbers was showing you in the previous video, and that is the edge top. So if we add the edge top into our feedback loop, I'm gonna connect that right after the sharpen. Because of the default settings, this is going to give us a crazy static texture at first. So let's hit the comp over input switch to begin. And if we then take a look at the texture, we can see we're getting very different line uh, shapes than we just saw a moment ago. And like with every other operator we've been playing around with here, we can play around with the parameters to modify how this looks. So you can try things like, for example, increasing the strength, uh, which will maybe have more of an effect if we play around with some of the other parameters, but you can see we get that static is starting to come back a little bit. Um, let's head that, bring that back to one and try first increasing the black level. So if we do that, we set the black level to 0 0.8. We can see that now we're getting something that looks a little bit more similar to what we saw before. But again, the lines that we're getting and the spacing between those lines is definitely different. Um, then you can start to try things like increasing the strength. And again, that's gonna give us a different patterning than we saw a moment ago. I'm gonna reset that back to one. Um, sample step is another thing that you can play around with. Um, this will give you potentially more of a subtle change in that final outcome, but again, worth playing with nonetheless. 
Edge color is one that I wanted to point out here. Um, if you set the edge color to something different, like in this case, I'm gonna turn it or set it to black and then increase the alpha to one, you can see that that again is having an impact on the lines that we see on screen. We're, we've almost like changed the thickness of those lines and um, that also is having an effect on how they fill the screen. So those are just a couple of ways that you can start to play around with that operator in particular. So one final effect that we're going to take a look at is the limit top. Uh, before we move on to that operator, I'm just gonna turn the gamma here back to one. I think I'll also turn the edge effect off um, and then we can turn this display flag off. So now that we've made those changes, let's just go ahead and move uh, everything after the edge top over to the right so we have room to add the limit. I'm just gonna add the limit top right after the edge top and then we'll turn the display back on so that we can see this in the background. Then let's head over to the quantize page. We're gonna turn the quantize position parameter to round which will begin by giving us this very pixelated effect, which is you know, not super interesting. But if we reduce the position step here to something like 0 0.001, we end up with this very geometric, almost kaleidoscopic version of that same reaction diffusion pattern. Um, so this is just to show you that you know, sometimes these unexpected operators can have a, an interesting impact on the way that this output looks. Um, so with that, this hopefully has given you a nice like brief introduction to creating these pseudo reaction diffusion effects within Touch Designer. And I think really all that's left to do for you now is to start really diving into experimenting with this stuff. As you can see, you know, the combination of different effects within the feedback loop really has a great uh, impact on the way the output looks. And there's plenty more that, you know, we haven't even dug into here that you can try on your own. Um, besides that, you can always work on you know, plugging different textures into this effect as well. As we saw at the beginning um, or earlier in the video, you know, plugging different textures in will give you very different results. So definitely start playing around with that as well. You can also play around with textures that aren't monochrome, uh, which is gonna provide you with very interesting layered uh, reaction diffusion kind of effects, which is a little bit different and um, interesting in its own way. Um, so definitely check that out as well. As always, the name of the game here is to just experiment with as many different combinations of effects and operators as you can. You never know what sort of outcome you'll get by combining different things together. Um, with that, we're going to close out the video. So once again, hope you've enjoyed putting this together. Uh, thanks for watching. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video here on the Interactive and Immersive HQ. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.